2018 BMW X1. I tested the refrigerant and 2.9% air mixed in with the refrigerant. This is YF refrigerant. YF refrigerant, 2018. 2018 aftermarket condenser made in China OEM you can see this is the BMW OEM and finnage wise looking at the fins if I do a comparison it looks like if I counted that it would be about 20 fins per inch and this one looks like 16 to almost 18 fins per inch. So they only cheated a little bit on the fins. The refrigerant passage tubes, if I count how many refrigerant passage tubes, it looks like they're very close. So this is not a really bad aftermarket dancer. Made in China. Uh, on this one, the passage, how do they have it cut off? Okay, I can see the sections in the back here. And here, this is where inside, internally, where you see these little marks, this does not connect to this. This is the out, this is the liquid out. And as you can see, let's get it in its right position. You see how this is? So let's take a look at this a little closer. Let's, let's flip it around, we're gonna flip it around because we can see where they actually have the internal cutoffs. And we know the vapor, the larger line, is the vapor coming in from the compressor. So that's coming in over here. And it looks like I'm going to have to cut open. If I come back and I have the saw, I'm going to have to cut it open. Have Because it looks like the vapor is by this little section piece right here. And that little section piece right there. Somehow it looks like the vapor is coming across right here it drops into here then it drops down into this section and it makes another pass and it's coming across right here in these two see this right here and see where we're going to hit right there that section off piece then the vapor drops again down to this part of the header on the lower in these last like so we have six tubes and then the vapor and a little bit of liquid and it's it's almost all liquid not quite but it's vapor it's condensing and it's coming through and see that section right there one two three four five six seven eight nine they actually have nine tubes coming across then that would fill this area up here it would be a bit of liquid not quite all and some vaporish and then it will go into here and it'll go into the receiver dryer this has a desiccant material in it and it has a dryer while well, you say well if i pump in liquid and vapor in here how am i going to get liquid up into this little part up here because it's open and doesn't all the gas and vapor just float to the top first and the liquid stays in the bottom no if i cut this open there'll be a straw so coming from this line it'll be going down like this and there'll be a straw going all the way to the bottom of this receiver dryer. So the bottom part that fills up with liquid would go up the straw, pass up the straw, and go into this top piece right here. Now if you look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven refrigerant tubes right here. This is your subcooling. This is where they're passing in hopefully pure liquid that'll go into these seven refrigerant passages and they'll come along these tubes and they'll exit where you see it's separated right here to the liquid line. And that is over here, dropping into the liquid line back to the receiver dryer. So they have it so the vapor can not make it to the top, that it's actually taking liquid off the vapor and then feeding the liquid to the top row of the condenser. And the subcooled liquid comes out the top. That's how this one is. So. If I come back here and they haven't thrown that away, I'll try to remember to cut this open and I'll cut the receiver dryer open for you guys and I'll show you how it's made internally, how they get the liquid from the bottom to the top. All right, so that's it for now. We got a couple more. So this one, ooh, big fuel pump. I mean, a big uh, water pump right there on that one. And then hit this one. 
Brand new condenser here, front end hit. This is all brand new. So that needs to be recharged. I'm doing the recovery out of this one because I just tested it. This one, damage up underneath. And the mysterious one, got a surprise from here. The Mustang E4S or whatever is it called, the Mark IV. So check this out, here's the electric Mark IV. Here's the Mark E4X. And here's the AC compressor right there. See all that black right there? That's the sound insulation. You see that rubber that I'm moving around? So that's your sound. You see how this is isolated? So there's no metal to metal vibration to transfer the metal, the vibration of the compressor through the sheet metal to the firewall so the passengers don't hear it. They have a really nice isolation on there. See that? It's completely floating. YF refrigerant, high voltage electrical three phase, plate heat exchanger, glycol loop. So we have water here. We have refrigerant here. We have a sub cooling internal heat exchanger line here. Here's our rear suction line or our front suction. Now here's our suction line back to the compressor. And then our suction line coming out of the internal heat exchanger you can see the liquid gets subcooled comes out of the internal heat exchanger then we'll go right up there to the expansion valve and that's for the passenger compartment expansion valve and this is the second one right here it goes in this direction that's the passenger compartment this is for cooling and chilling the glycol there's your expansion valve there's your solenoid that cuts off the flow of refrigerant to the expansion valve because you wouldn't want the glycol to be down at one time when it's not called for, but the compressor still feeds refrigerant through here. It would freeze the water. It would probably drop down below the temperature and it could possibly freeze the glycol in the plate heat exchanger and it would rupture the plate heat exchanger and cause a leak. So you wouldn't want that. And that's why they have that solenoid right there. So this is the glycol loop you're looking at right here. So it looks like we have on this one right there, that's a pump. So that's one of your glycol pumps. This one right here, this little guy right here, this looks like it's more, is it a pump or a two-way valve? I feel the connector in the back right here. This one might be a valve for off and on or a small pump, I'm not sure on this one yet. No, it doesn't have much of a body there. This one's definitely a pump. This is a four-way valve. This one right here, all that is is a valve in there and it decides in what direction the glycol is gonna move. You see one, two, three, four. So that has a plate in there and it decides where the hot or cool will go at when it selects. Over here, we have another pump. Here's our second glycol pump right here and that's going off into the inverter right here and motor assembly the motor is down there the inverter is up here and you can see everything is taking care of glycol glycol they got two separate glycol units on here and remember this is a all-electric vehicle there is no glycol for an engine here's our glycol heat exchanger up front what you would normally call most people would say that's the radiator but that's your glycol plate heat exchanger where you have the glycol lines coming back to. And here is your condenser. They still have a standard condenser. They haven't gone to a glycol system yet. And you can see your standard high pressure refrigerant goes in at the top and your liquid subcool comes out of the bottom. And I wish this was up on a rack so I can follow the glycol loop and see how it cools off in the battery pack i wish they had this disabled we got to get one that's almost totaled and like hit in the front and the back when they take out all the interior and they have the bottom panels on and they're doing a really big wreck hopefully i come across one of those and i can show you how the chilled glycol makes its loop through the battery pack and uh yeah this is the future of the vehicles and i wonder if uh cytk whatever that software is for doing estimating has this in it I'm gonna try that right now. I'm gonna take out the software and I'm gonna see if I could get a price for this compressor. Let's get a price for this condenser and uh, see if they show 
this plate heat exchanger assembly inside there. See if I could get a price for that. Because uh, I know if you burn up this compressor and you have black burnt metal flake oil throughout the whole system, yeah, we're probably looking at about a good eight to 12 grand here. Let's see what happens. Yeah, eight grand, maybe 12. We'll see. All right, I'll come back. 